the Roblox lawsuit is really interesting because it uses this Computer Fraud and Abuse Act law that is a little bit controversial and you'll see why. But what they're doing now is suing an alleged griefer and not just really any griefer. There's a lot of griefing that goes on in games. If you're not familiar with video games and griefing, well, you know how there are people in real life who really just kind of exist to annoy other people and they get their jollies from seeing the reactions of people who were trying to do something totally normal, but oh, now they can't do it or they have to do it while also putting up with this annoying person. Well, that's the accusation here against Benjamin Robert Simon, a.k.a. Ruben Sim, a user or former player of Roblox who seemed to only exist in the game to try and annoy other people. But instead of listening to me summarize it, I actually want to dive into the lawsuit and see what's really going on. Before we do that, a little bit of background about the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act so you can see what is so controversial about this. The Computer Fraud and Abuse Act is a 1986 law that was part of a United States cybersecurity bill and amended existing computer fraud law. The bill was enacted in response to concerns that computer-related crimes might go unpunished, but it basically gives this criminal violation a civil component as well. Let's take a quick look at the law. This is 18 U.S.C. U.S. Code Section 1030, Fraud and Related Activity in Connection with Computers, and there's a lot to it here, but I've highlighted some of it out, and let's go through it. It says, whoever and then it starts one of the five different sections. So the one that applies here is number five. Whoever intentionally accesses a protected computer without authorization and as a result of such conduct causes damage and loss shall be guilty of a violation here, okay? Now, to be guilty would be a criminal act, but there is a section down here, section G, any person who suffers damage or loss by reason of a violation of this section may maintain a civil action against the violator to obtain compensatory damages and injunctive or other equitable relief. E equitable relief would be fairness relief. So if you need to make an application to the court, says, says something that's unfair. We don't necessarily have a law on point, but this is obviously unfair. That's equitable relief. However, a civil action for a violation may only be brought if the conduct involves one of the factors set forth above in subclauses 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 of subsection C4A1. And yeah, it's kind of hard to follow that, but if you go slow, section C4A1, and here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a loss to one or more persons during a one-year period of at least $5,000 in value, the modification or impairment of the medical examination, diagnosis, treatment, or care of one or more individuals. So that's not going to be it. Uh, three, physical injury to any person. Four, a threat to public health or safety. You'll, that does actually come into it here. You'll see that. And five, damage affecting a computer used by the United States government. So I'm assuming we're using section or subsection capital I or capital one here lost to one or more persons during a one-year period of at least $5,000 or more. So without further ado then, what is actually the complaint here? So Roblox is an online gaming platform made by Roblox Corporation. Uh, it's usually targeted towards children. I, I don't think that uh, us adults really play much Roblox. If you do, I guess maybe tell us in the comments why you're drawn to a children's game. To participate in the Roblox platform, users must first create a Roblox account, which means agreeing to the Roblox terms of use, which is, which is a contract. So we already know we're going to be dealing with a contract here. By clicking sign up, you are agreeing to the terms of use. The account will not be activated without the user's acceptance. So you have agreed to a contract and they put in the contract that you promise to be responsible for your use of the service to defend and indemnify Roblox. So that means that if you do something to hurt Roblox and they get sued, then you owe them. Or if you hurt Roblox, you agree to, to pay the claim or, or pay the damage. 
So claims, liability, damage, loss, expenses, including reasonable attorney's fees connected with your access or use of the service and your violation of the terms or your violation of third party rights or any dispute between you and a third party. These terms expressly incorporate other policies, including the Roblox community standards. These prohibit certain types of sexual conversation, threats of violence, bullying, stalking, trolling, harassment, intimidation, singling out a user for ridicule or abuse, harassment, sexual content, any nudity or discrimination or hate speech, profanity, harassing Roblox employees or contractors, threatening damage to Roblox offices or data storage facilities, unauthorized access to systems or accounts, as well as threatening or encouraging such activity, using VPNs to mask your location, or, or uh, gaining unauthorized access to the platform, opening new accounts for the purpose of evading a ban on a previous account, and invading or flooding experiences in the game in an effort to destroy the experience or its reputation. Defendant Simon violated every one of the above prohibitions, was terminated and banned from the Roblox platform for doing so, and yet continues his campaign of violations through unauthorized and surreptitious access to the Roblox platform. Defendant Simon is a 24-year-old, so why a 24-year-old is griefing children in Roblox? I think already points to a serious problem with this person's maturity. <laughs> it's a, a little bit uh, questionable there. It's, it's, a, it's a lot questionable, let's be fair. He's a Kentucky resident and former Roblox user with a long history of fixating on and then harassing people, including Roblox users and employees. His latest bad acts have included making terrorist threats online to intimidate and deter Roblox employees and users and hacking around Roblox security measures designed to block him from the platform. That's going to come into this. Pay attention to what the hacking was and let's see if we can figure out was it really hacking or was it just a potential violation of the CFAA. After Roblox permanently banned Defendant Simon from the Roblox platform, he gathered an enormous following of YouTube users, 760,000 subscribers, as well as Twitter followers, 23,000 followers, and Reddit community, 214 members, Patreon subscribers, and Discord servers, among other social media followers on various platforms. The focus of his social media content is targeted at spreading injurious content, including false accusations about Roblox, its employees, and other users. His social media followers have become a cult-like cyber mob that echoes Defendant Simon's conduct and harassment of Roblox employees and users. So not just does this guy exist as a 24-year-old griefer, but there's potentially hundreds of thousands of other people out there who like what he does. Great. On October 14th to 16th, 2021, Roblox had its Developers Conference in San Francisco, the RDC 2021 Conference. It was attended by more than 350 Roblox users, employees, and media, and 600 virtual attendees, so approximately 1,000 people. Before and during the conference, Simon and his cyber mob posted numerous derogatory and defamatory statements online about Roblox, its employees, and the conference designed to deter and intimidate conference goers. In the days leading up to the conference, Simon engaged his followers on Discord, glamorizing the April 3rd, 2018 active shooter and murder event at YouTube headquarters in San Bruno, California, which is not something that you would ever want to glamorize. That's, that's terrible. They say he threatened slash taunted a copycat act of terrorism at Roblox headquarters in nearby San Mateo, California. Defendant Simon wrote to his followers to wait until someone does it to Roblox. I mean, that you're getting real close to, a, to an actionable threat there. Then, during RDC 2021, Defendant Simon publicly posted a terrorist bomb threat to his Twitter account, knowing that the threat was false. Quote, 
Breaking, San Francisco police are currently searching for notorious Islamic extremist Julius Al Muhammad. If you see this individual at RDC, please call 911 immediately. Defendant Simon posted an image below the text purporting to depict the fictitious Islamic extremist as having posted a YouTube video titled Someone Blow Up Roblox Now. Defendant Simon made related posts including Don't Come to RDC Tomorrow. Defendant Simon knew this information to be false and intended it to disrupt the conference and to intimidate and deter Roblox employees, users, vendors from attending the conference. Defendant Simon's followers in his cyber mob copied his actions and posted threatening messages of their own, including purported posts from would-be active shooters and others. For example, quote, too bad someone didn't recreate Christ Church shooting at RDC. One follower even claimed to have poisoned the drinks being offered at RDC 2021. Yeah, that's not funny. That's not... I... I... I, I I question what is wrong with people who think that this is uh, any sort of productive or good thing to do. Uh, you know, this is why we can't have nice things. Defendant Simon's false terrorist threats had their intended effect. People reported that they thought there was an actual shooting and stayed away from RDC 2021 when they saw Defendant Simon's false posts. Even worse, RDC 2021 was forced into a temporary lockdown while local police and private security conducted a search to secure the facility. As a result of these false terrorist threats, Roblox was forced to incur expenses of more than $50,000 to secure RDC 2021 and investigate the incident. Defendant Simon's termination for harassment and lewd conduct. So we started with the big event, and I often suggest that drafters of complaints, plaintiffs, should lead off with the strongest argument rather than build up to it. I know that when you tell a story, you want to kind of build up to the big climax, but when you are writing a complaint, you want to start with your strongest argument and then go from there. And maybe even at some point explain that you have other claims or other arguments, but summarize them. And if they're weak arguments, then you make them small. You make them brief so that they don't take up more space than they're worth. Defendant Simon was originally terminated from Roblox for repeatedly using racial and homophobic slurs and profanity, engaging in sexual conversation, and uploading inappropriate lewd content. By way of example, Defendant Simon attempted to upload a picture of himself naked, with only a lampshade covering his private region. Defendant Simon attempted to upload a sex game to the Roblox platform. Defendant Simon created or used inappropriate accounts with names such as, well, I won't repeat them here, but that's what they are. Defendant Simon attempted to upload pictures of Adolf Hitler. Defendant Simon intentionally circumvented chat filters to target other users with homophobic slurs and profanity, such as the things listed here that I don't need to repeat. There are multiple incidents of Defendant Simon engaging in targeted harassment of Roblox users, which harassment he then extended to employees who took remedial action against Defendant Simon. As part of this harassment, Defendant Simon repeatedly used racial and homophobic slurs. He openly brags about this targeted harassment. Who should I personally attack next? He asks. As part of his campaign of harassment and cyberbullying, Simon solicited information on another Roblox user so that he could target that user with harassment. He impersonated Roblox employees online in other forums in a manner targeted to permanently injure the reputation in the public eye with false portrayals and statements. He uploaded a video targeted at Roblox's CEO that at one point depicts Simon shooting guns and made false public statements that a massive accident at a former job that killed people was the impetus for the creation of Roblox. What? Outside of the Roblox platform, Defendant Simon engages in conduct that violates the terms and harasses users and employees. He tweeted a photoshopped picture of a former Roblox employee who was openly gay, depicting him nude, and then repeatedly harassed him on Twitter. He posted images of an adult nature of Roblox avatars and praises those who create them. I mean, that's just Internet Rule 34. Uh, I, I don't really agree that that's a good thing to do, but uh, that is something people do. 
repeatedly post libelous statements about Roblox's founder and CEO, attributing false statements and conduct to the CEO that defendant Simon knows to be false, which he makes with intent to cause injury. They will have to prove all of this. And what we don't have is like an exhibit A. There isn't one attached to the complaint that shows screenshots of all of this. So that is hopefully something that plaintiff's counsel has and is holding on to for later admission into the public record as evidence of the defendant's misconduct. If they don't have that, then they've got an uphill battle to prove this, because according to this, uh, Simon has already deleted all of this. As a result of the above conduct, Simon was permanently banned from accessing the platform. Simon's computer hacking to access the Roblox platform. Simon is aware and has repeatedly acknowledged in writing that he has been permanently banned from accessing the platform. He also has acknowledged that Roblox has employed numerous technological barriers to block him from accessing the platform. Despite knowing he is not authorized to access the platform, he readily admits using computer hacks to circumvent these technological barriers to continue to access the platform without authorization. He has repeatedly bragged on social media, you can't ban me, how are you going to ban me now, huh? He has repeatedly posted video evidence of his hacking into the Roblox platform on his YouTube channel and on Twitter. More than 20 accounts have been terminated by Roblox after they were detected as being created or used by Defendant Simon without authorization. Simon continues to create and solicit others to create new Roblox accounts for his use so he can access the platform without authorization. In the video Simon has posted of himself hacking into the Roblox platform, he shows himself engaging in the same bad conduct that caused his original termination, including unauthorized conversations, extreme profanity, harassment, using explicit account names, and other bad conduct that violates the terms. For example, the following are YouTube video transcripts from a single video showing recent statements made by Simon on the Roblox platform to other Roblox users after he hacked into the Roblox platform. Defendant Simon unabashedly posted this YouTube video himself. Did you see the Rumen Sim video, How They Banned Me? How they thought they could get rid of me? Yo, you come here often. Yeah, I come here often. I'm coming right now, lol. What the F? We need to normalize swearing on here. We need to swear as much as possible. He's going to swearing. Tyrone's going to sexual content. He's going to, yeah, lots of, <laughs> lots of stuff that I just really don't want to repeat on the YouTube channel. I won't black it out. You can read it if you want to look at your screen, but uh, otherwise I'm not <laughs> repeating it. Uh, not naming any names is searching for the database for accounts that have been accessing from my IP and then banning them manually. I've also been MAC address banned, meaning Roblox won't work on my computer, which is why this entire video was recorded on a virtual machine. So he's using virtual machines and I think VPNs to work around the ban. How are you going to ban me now? I also want to thank everyone who's donated. I have more accounts than I could possibly hope to use and they're getting banned very quickly. And they link to the video if you guys want to see, see it for yourself. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll be able to get any revenue he's got from his YouTube channel. After infiltrating the Roblox platform without authorization, Defendant Simon video records his experiences to use that data in YouTube videos he creates to profit from his unauthorized and unlawful activity. Simon has published his methods of hacking in order to assist, encourage, and teach others to do the same. Roblox has expended over $100,000 to investigate and block Simon from accessing the Roblox platform. Knowing that his social media posts are unlawful and admit to unlawful conduct, and after anticipating litigation over these posts, Defendant Simon has engaged in an effort to conceal and spoliate this evidence by deleting his social media posts without preserving copies of these posts and otherwise destroying relevant evidence. So evidence spoliation is a big freaking deal. Basically, if you know that you're getting sued for something, especially if you have actually been served with a lawsuit, but if you've been told, you'd, by the way, uh, we, you know, we, int we intend to sue over this and you should not delete any evidence. But at some point there, you are on notice of l impending litigation. And if you go and delete that evidence, it can make the plaintiff's job really easy. If the 
plaintiff simply asks the judge for what's called an adverse inference. The judge will hold a hearing and, and or, or look at the filings of the parties. And if it can be shown that the defendant deleted things in order to avoid having to turn over those things to the plaintiff in discovery, then the judge will infer that the content of those posts was adverse to your case. So in, the, in this case, if defendant Simon has deleted his social media in anticipation of the litigation, trying to conceal the evidence of the misconduct, the judge will assume that those posts were adverse to his case, that those posts showed things that tend to incriminate him or, or otherwise make the plaintiff's case for them. This is not a criminal allegation, but I don't know what the word is for opening yourself up to liability. But that's basically what's going to happen. If the plaintiff doesn't already have copies of these things, all they'll have to do is show the judge that, that Simon deleted things after being on notice of the litigation, then the judge will assume that Simon is liable for the things that would be shown by those posts. It makes the plaintiff's case easier. Defendant acted with malice, oppression, and fraud under California civil law. In engaging in the conduct described above, Simon acted with malice, oppression, and fraud, and is therefore liable for punitive damages. Simon acted with malice because his conduct was intended to cause injury to Roblox. Seems pretty easy, assuming what they're saying is true was carried on in a willful and conscious disregard of the rights and safety of Roblox, its users and employees. Simon acted with oppression because he subjected employees and users to cruel and unjust hardship in conscious disregard of their rights. And Simon acted fraudulently because he knowingly made fraudulent statements and engaged in computer fraud with specific intent to cause injury to Roblox. So yeah, that's a real thing. When you sign a terms of service agreement while pretending to be someone else, in other words, if if he had to pretend that he was someone else so to avoid a ban, then yeah, he's committed fraud. He's misrepresented who he is in order to get Roblox to sign the agreement, to make the agreement to allow him to use the platform. So that is some kind of fraud. Whether this is hacking, well, not in the traditional IT sense of the word or computer science sense of the word, it sounds more like he used a virtual machine and a virtual private network to conceal his IP address and conceal the MAC address of his uh, local computer device. And that apparently was enough to avoid the ban. I'm not sure how else you're supposed to, as a plaintiff, how else you're supposed to protect from people doing this. So yeah, one of the remedies for someone getting into your computer systems by pretending to be someone else is to use the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act or accuse someone of fraud or I guess some of these other claims. Let's look at those claims now. The causes of action, one, violation of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Simon violated the CFAA by intentionally accessing a protected computer without authorization, causing loss and damage in excess of $100,000. So if we go back to the CFAA here, if we, if we look here at whoever intentionally accesses a protected computer without authorization causing damage, and we have to use 4A11 here, a loss to one or more persons during any one year period, aggregating at least $5,000 in value. Yeah, that's a Computer Fraud and Abuse Act allegation. And so the remedy for that, if we go down to subsection G, the remedy for that is a civil action for compensatory damages and injunctive relief. You can't get punitive damages under the CFAA as I'm reading this here but compensatory damages would definitely be available. Maybe punitive damages would be available for some of the other counts. Let's take a look at those. They also seek injunctive relief, enjoining Simon from any attempt to access Roblox under that CFAA count. They will prove damages at trial. They want disgorgement of unjust enrichment, which would be the profits. They want punitive damages, although I'm not sure that you get that under the CFAA and attorney's fees and costs. 
Count two is a violation of the California Comprehensive Computer Data Access and Fraud Act. He knowingly accessed without permission data computers, computer systems, and networks in order to devise and execute a scheme and artifice to defraud and deceive plaintiff and to wrongfully control and obtain data. He knowingly accessed without permission to take, copy, and make use of data from a computer system. So this is all related to accessing computer systems without permission, which is a weird way of saying, like, you broke into a computer. I don't know if he broke into a computer. Their only access method to this computer seems to be the ability to create the terms of service. And that's the controversial part of these laws. Maybe not this particular example. You can see using this particular example, though, that if you wanted to nab people or, or catch people who have circumvented a ban with something other than just a contract law violation, then you've got these other laws now that allow you to accuse them of unauthorized access to a computer system. It's, it's just that when we think of unauthorized access to a computer system, we usually think of someone stealing data through uh, hacking into or social engineering their way into unauthorized access. This is kind of that though, so it really does fit. But that's the controversial part, is it's not usually what we call like password stealing or, or cracking or hacking or something like that. Knowingly accessed to alter data, software which reside on an internal or external network, sure. Without permission disrupted and caused the disruption of computer services. There's a bunch of things in here that all constitute some sort of unauthorized access. He willfully committed these violations according to the complaint. They suffered damages as a result. They seek injunctive relief and damages for the expense incurred to investigate and remediate the intrusions. This is really the big one though, breach of contract. They had a terms of service. He obviously would have violated the terms of service if he circumvented a ban. Plus he did all of these things that they say you're not allowed to do, including the uh, harassment and intimidation and ridicule and abuse and hate speech and stuff like that. Plus using a VPN to mask his location and evading account bans. So he violated all that stuff and that would normally get you contract damages, sometimes multiplied by three for punitive damages. Sometimes punitive damages could be connected to how bad the conduct was and maybe it's more than times three. They also accuse him of fraud. So they're saying fraud for misrepresenting the presence of a terrorist threat, not just for evading a ban and pretending to be somebody else. He intended to defraud plaintiff by engaging in this conduct, knowing that they would have to take security measures. Plaintiff relied on fraudulent posts because prudence is required when risking life and limb. Plaintiff has suffered damages as a direct and proximate result of defendant's fraud. Plaintiff seeks injunctive relief a permanent injunction in joining similar conduct. What does that get you if they say, you can't do this again? Oh, we won the case, he can't do it again. Well, if he does it again, it's a violation of the court order and the judge can hold him in contempt and contempt can be a criminal contempt, which can totally avoid any necessity to charge someone with a criminal crime, a criminal crime, to charge someone with a criminal act in order to get jail time or criminal punishments. If you have a civil case and the judge orders the defendant to do something and they don't do it, or orders the defendant to not do something and they do it, then you can get contempt. Contempt can become criminal contempt and the judge can throw people in jail to stop them from doing the thing they're not supposed to do or not doing the thing they are supposed to do. So then they also claim tortious interference with prospective economic relations, basically that he has committed a tortious act or a wrongful act in order to damage Roblox's economic uh, relationships with its users and its uh, vendors, its advertisers, its partners, that sort of thing. Also to dissuade attendance at the conference, the RDC 2021 conference. So they've suffered a loss and they want injunctive relief, etc. Tortious interference with a contract is the last count here. He intended and intends to interfere with these contracts by using fraudulent terrorist threats and libelous statements about Roblox, its employees, and the platform to interfere with RDC 2021, the attendance at RDC 2021, and the participation on the Roblox platform plaintiff's performance of its contracts, because it has a contract with its users, right? 
became more difficult and expensive, many users stopped participating in the platform. Plaintiff seeks injunctive relief as well, preventing further misconduct. So they asked for a permanent injunction preventing him from making or publishing false terroristic threats that impact Roblox, from making false statements about Roblox, from glamorizing or encouraging violence against Roblox or its employees or facilities, from accessing the platform, from violating the terms, from approaching within 100 feet of any office or any facility or any residence of an employee officer or director, from harassing Roblox users, employees, executives, attorneys, and agents, from making, publishing, or maintaining public display of any video or audio file recorded during unauthorized access of the Roblox platform. They ask for a permanent injunction requiring the deletion of all social media accounts previously used by Simon to engage in conduct prohibited by the injunction above. That's going to give him a weird out. In saying that he deleted everything, he's going to say, well, they asked me to delete everything, so I did. Actual damages in an amount to be proven at trial, but at least $150,000, punitive and exemplary damages of $1.5 million, disgorgement of defendant's ill-gotten gains, including YouTube and Patreon revenue earned by defendant from content prohibited by the injunction above, restitution, pre-judgment and post-judgment interest, plaintiff costs of suit and attorney's fees, and other relief that the court may deem just and proper, and they want a jury trial. Frankly, that is a just and fair result from this level of griefing. I'm not a big fan of griefing. In fact, our new world experience is currently suffering from a kind of griefing where the people who control the companies and uh, settlements on our server are doing everything they can to make it miserable for all the other players. I guess it's just fun for them to do that. And sure, I guess using a game mechanic as intended within its limits to make everybody miserable might not be a violation of the terms of service, but then this is if all these allegations are true. Now, in the United States, you're innocent till you're proven guilty. This isn't a criminal trial. In this case, you are innocent or not liable until proven liable by a preponderance of the evidence. So Roblox still has to show all this evidence to the court and convince the court more than the defendant convinces the court. It's going to be like a tug of war and whoever convinces the court wins. But if any of this is even partially true, it sounds like Mr. Simon is liable. And so Mr. Simon's an adult, a 24-year-old adult, and he probably faces some amount of damage. Maybe he'll reach a settlement with the Roblox attorneys, or maybe they want to make an example out of his misconduct to deter others from doing this. But yeah, you have to remember that when you join these services and you sign a contract, you agree to a contract, those terms of service are a valid and binding contract in the vast majority of cases. Unless there's an argument to be made that the contract was so disconnected from the sign-in process or sign-up process that you really didn't know that there was a contract involved or terms of service involved, those terms then are going to be valid and can be visited upon you if you violate those terms. And then they usually include something like you saw here, an indemnification clause where if you violate the contract, then you don't just owe for the violation, you owe for all the results of having to pursue you for the violation as well. The costs of the pursuit, the investigation, the attorney's fees, court costs, everything like that. So yeah, this could end up being even more than a $1.65 million lawsuit against Mr. Simon. If the judge agrees that this conduct was so bad as to grant 1.5 million, a 10 times multiplier for misconduct, yeah, the judge can do that. I've seen that with my own eyes. I have a video, I'll put a bubble up in the corner, but there was a gentleman who erased his hard drive after being accused of piracy and reinstalled Windows and tried to convince the court through what I believe was false testimony that he did not pirate the plaintiff's videos. In that case, it was adult videos in a Malibu Media case, the first Malibu Media case. 
He was not my client, but I was part of a defense team, so I got to see what the other attorney's clients were doing. And when it came time for the trial date, the court's expert witness was able to show that he had deleted the evidence and erased his hard drive and stuck it in a encrypting USB enclosure and then installed Windows and reactivated it. Microsoft answered a subpoena and testified through the subpoena that Windows had been reactivated three days after the guy received the subpoena for the computer. So if Mr. Simon really did delete his social media in response to either a subpoena or other notification about pending litigation, then that's probably spoliation of evidence, and the judge can hit you with a 10 times multiplier. That Malibu Media case was for five infringements at $2,250 per title, but the judge multiplied his damages by 10 and hit him with all of the opposing side's attorney's fees and investigation fees and court costs. His damages for five infringements was $241,000. So this is possible. We could see Mr. Simon hit with 1.6 or more million dollars in damages for having done this to Roblox. So these things are serious and you really should take them seriously and maybe not participate in this kind of conduct. Sure, there's still guilty but less guilty versions of griefing that you can get away with. Some of our viewers have pointed out that there are other griefers, like professional griefers who make YouTube videos who haven't been pursued by Roblox, but those people could be. And the plaintiff has the discretion to choose who they pursue and who they don't. There's really not an argument that says you can't pursue one case because you didn't pursue another case. That does happen in trademark and sometimes in other areas of law, but in these cases, we have statutes of limitations. So long as they pursue somebody within the statute of limitations, there's really not an argument that they didn't pursue somebody else, so they can't pursue you. Eladriel asks, is erasing evidence illegal if the other party hasn't told you? Well, it depends. If you erased the evidence in anticipation of litigation and trying to clear your name, that's probably spoliation of evidence. But if you just deleted your Facebook for whatever reason, and then a month or two later, someone comes along and says, hey, we're going to sue you. We need that evidence. That's not the same thing. And you can probably get away with that without any adverse inference. You may still have to defend yourself from a motion for an adverse inference in the court case. But it really is when it's in anticipation of litigation. Now, I'm not covering the situation where someone lies under oath and tries to convince the judge that they didn't mean to erase things in anticipation of litigation. I just mean if, in fact, the underlying truthful facts are that someone did anticipate litigation or was on notice of pending litigation and then erases evidence that can and likely would be used by a plaintiff to convince a judge to infer that the evidence was adverse to that party. Did he not override the deleted space with something like too bad or something? He, no, he uh, changed the, you know, how you can change the name of your Windows drives, like an eight, you can use like an eight character ASCII character name. Um, he changed the name to squeaky, which the plaintiff said meant squeaky clean, like this is a squeaky clean hard drive. And when the plaintiff's attorney was presenting the whole thing to the judge, they had prepared slides, a PowerPoint presentation, and the border of the slides was all duckies and soap suds and bath time themes, as in he made his hard drive squeaky clean. And it was very effective. The judge did not like what the man was accused of, and the expert witness confirmed that that's most likely what happened. It's a civil case, so it's not beyond a reasonable doubt. The standard is preponderance of the evidence, and that was enough to convince the judge, and he was hit with $241,000. Yes. I don't know if he ever actually paid the $241,000. I, I believe they settled that case, and I, I don't want to speak out of turn of what I think that number was. He was also referred to the U.S. attorney for perjury charges, and I don't think he ever got perjury charges, but uh, he certainly had perjury charges on the table. So that's inside the Roblox lawsuit. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you tired of this kind of griefing and wished 
that plaintiffs would go after these kinds of things more often? Or was this just the most egregious case and so they targeted him because he clearly crossed some very real world lines? Or do you think this kind of griefing is super funny? And can you in some way defend this conduct? I'm not challenging you to do so, but if you are one of these people who thinks this is super funny, why do you think this is super funny? What do you get out of it? Uh, maybe, maybe some answers would help enlighten the rest of us who just don't understand. Anyway, I love you all. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to our top supporters in November. John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hightoff, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Shadow Tycho, Earthbound Star, Pure Magma, Drew Hart, Tech Tech Potato, Eric Tams, and the Blood Soaked Survivors. You can support Lawful Masses on Patreon.com slash LJ French, Sponsus.com slash Law, through YouTube membership, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for our weekly production live stream on twitch.tv slash lawful masses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye.